Hey, in this video we'll be printing a jig that will allow you to perform square and accurate cuts uh, on a soda bottle. You'll find uh, lots of uses for accurately cut bottles and bottle slices in lots of craft projects. And once you see how it all works, you'll probably come up with uh, some of your idea, <laughs> some of your own ideas. So stick around and uh, check out our plastic soda pop bottle cutting jig. Printable Science presents a 3D printed plastic soda bottle cutting jig. This video has been made possible by the generosity of our patrons and viewers like you. You know, people have been cutting glass uh, bottles for craft projects for decades. In the ancient past, I can remember having done that too, or I remember trying to do it because I remember that it didn't really work out all that well for me. The bottle shattered or, or didn't cut cleanly and uh, I'm sure I cut myself more than once. Also, if you're making things for children, it's probably best to avoid glass entirely, and so that led me to consider using plastic soda pop bottles as an alternative to glass. Well, like so much in life, and in the oft-quoted words of some wise guy, in theory there is no difference between practice and theory, in practice there is. Now, the first uh, hurdle I encountered was the problematic nature of the plastic bottle wall. It's thin and it's flexible, so if you press on it, it pushes in with your touch, and, and uh, by the extension, if you uh, take a knife blade and try and cut, it, it, it deforms as well. That makes it difficult to, to make a clean cut as the knife always is working against you. It's pushing the sides in while you're trying to cut around. So I figured the first thing to do would be to uh, make a platen that could be inserted uh, snugly uh, inside a bottle to keep the sides nice and firm while they were being cut. And that was a good first step, but the next hurdle was the knife blade wanting to wander. The solution was to fashion a groove in the platen to hold the knife blade in position as the bottle was rotated in order to keep it in place. Well, that wasn't the end of my problems because the force required to cut the bottle was significant enough to knock or nudge the platen out of square with the sides of the bottle, leading to a very unsatisfactory non-square cut. So the next step was to design and print a lead screw that you could uh, put in uh, with uh, a handle at the top of the bottle and with the additional advantage of providing some accurate position of the cutting groove exactly where you want it. Now there's a little bit of mechanical magic that allows you to screw the lead cap uh, onto the soda bottle that still allows you to freely turn the lead screw handle. In practice, even with the lead screw in place, the platen tends to wander up the lead screw while you're cutting. So just to keep it in place, I, I made this retaining lock screw that uh, you can screw on tightly uh, at the base of the platen. so uh, that it holds things nicely and snugly throughout the process. Problem solved? <laughs> Not quite. The problem is, is that the inner diameter of a pop bottle can vary enough between manufacturers such that what fits snugly in a bottle from one manufacturer has too much give in the bottle of another and doesn't even fit at all in the bottle of another. To address that problem I created a cone with a a bunch of 10 millimeter high bands spanning from the largest to the smallest diameter you likely uh, you likely encounter. The second problem is that the diameter of the bottle increases slightly from the bottom to the top. It's not that much of a variance but it's enough that the platen may not fit snugly enough for a clean cut if you're cutting the bottle close to the neck. The reason they manufacture them this way is so that the finished bottle can be pulled out of the mold quickly and easily. The solution for this complication was simply to parameterize the platen so that I'd have an STL file for a range of diameters that I could print off depending on the actual bottle I cut. And then to help with that I designed and printed out a graduated cone with step layers of different diameter. Now all I had to do is rough cut off the bottom of the bottle, put in the cone, read off the diameter and then select the platen of the right diameter to thread onto the lead screw. Unfortunately, we're still not done because while we could leave things the way they are, printing a whole bunch of different size platens 
could easily take forever. So I reduced the exterior diameter of the platen, called it a chuck now, and printed that off. Then I created a number of STL files for a bunch of platens that thread onto the chuck. So while it takes a bit of time to print off the chuck, you only need to print a platen for the diameter or diameters you need, which saves a bit of time. So at this point we've got a finished project and we can start printing things off. All these parts were printed in PLA with two bottom layers and three top layers at 20% infill with a 0.2 millimeter Z layer height. However, for some of the parts you'll want to configure your slicer to give you parts that will work better with your printer. For the lead screw, which is printed in two parts, you'll want to turn on your brim and you'll want to increase your fill percentage to around 60%. That will give the screw the extra strength it needs at the connecting point so it doesn't break off. And the brim helps the whole thing from falling over before the print is done. You'll also want to consider special slicer handling for the chuck, which as designed consists of a tall interior thread. Now if you use a lot of threads in your printed objects, you know that interior threads are a bit of a pain. As a general rule of thumb, you want to give your interior threads as much of an exterior diameter as you can. Now, that's the first step. The second is to direct your slicer to avoid crossing perimeters. This will keep the stringing to a minimum. You can see the difference this makes by just looking at the preview of your printed part. As you can see, with show travel enabled and without avoid crossing perimeters turned on, there's lots of head movement across the interior of the part, and a lot of that travel translates into a string of filament that stretches across the path. Here's a view of the same part with avoid crossing perimeters turned on. As you can see, there's hardly any paths that cross over the inner diameter, and now you get a much cleaner print. So before we start assembly, let's prepare a bottle for cutting. We begin by carefully cutting and peeling off the label, and then using some acetone, we apply that with a paper towel to the glue spots remaining on the bottle until they can be fully wiped off. Next, we take a utility knife, and you can check the video description for the link to a project where you can print your own utility knife handle. Anyway, we take the knife and punch a hole at the base of the bottle, the part where the smooth sides meet up with the pattern bottom. Now, you can continue to cut across the or cut around the bottle with the utility knife, but the safest thing to do is to use a pair of scissors. Insert one of the blades in the hole you created with the utility knife, and then cut around the base of the bottle until you have removed the bottom of it. Now take the sizer you've already printed and insert it in the base of the soda bottle until it bottoms out. And you want to make sure that you do this so that the bottle is sitting square on the sizer or else you'll end up with an inaccurate dimension. Having done that, you can then select the two STL files uh, for the platen pieces that match the diameter and print those off. And while those pieces are being printed, we can start our assembly. So get your glue out and let's get started. We start by gluing the two pieces of the lead screw together. Now use the glue sparingly and only apply it to the first two or three threads of the connecting bolt. You don't want glue to seep out onto the outer thread or you won't be able to thread things onto the lead screw. Now this part has been designed so that when the tightened, the threads naturally line up so that you end up with a continuous thread even at the joint. But before you let uh, the glue set, use the spoke part and check that it travels freely over that section where the two parts of the screw connect together. You then want to screw the top bushing onto the top of the lead screw once again, making sure you only apply glue to the top two or three threads of the bolt. You then want to insert the top of the lead screw into the soda bottle cap and take the thread washer and thread that on to the top of the bushing, or on top of the top bushing. The, that, thread washer, that thread washer is what enables the lead screw to be firmly fastened to the bottle, but still allows you to freely turn the lead screw. Now finally, put some glue on the threads of the top bushing and thread that onto the handle. Now once the platen pieces are assembled and the glue is dried, you're ready to carry on with the assembly. Begin by taking the chuck and screwing in the spokes that has the interior bolt. You may first have to clean off some of the stringing of the threads left by your printer, but that's an easy task. Just use some small pliers to grab and pull them off. Then take the spokes and screw it into the platen. Now, this should be fairly easy to do, but depending on how well uh, your platen was printed, you may have to coax the fit. 
If things are too sticky, you can sand the threads with a bit of sandpaper or use a utility knife to scrape away the excess filament on the threads. What I find works best is just a gradual tightening and loosening of the parts, which helps tap out the fit through friction. You can use a bit of pressure, but don't get too carried away or the parts will seize. Now in five or 10 minutes, you should have a fairly smooth screw action. Now take the short platen piece and thread it onto the top of the chuck. Just like the spoke piece, you, you may have to rock the part back and forth until it seats properly in the groove. When you have the top platen in the correct position, in other words, when the top of the platen is about a half a millimeter short of the deepest point of the groove in the platen. Now take just a dab of glue and place it on the platen threads at roughly the middle point of the platen. Once again, be sparing because you, you don't want to use too much glue and have it seep onto the threads at the end that you need to keep clear. Now, take the spoke piece and thread it in from the end opposite the top platen and continue tightening until it slaps up against the top platen. Once you've done that, remove the top platen piece. This is just a precaution to prevent the top platen piece from getting stuck to the chuck, just in case you used a little too much glue for affixing the spoke pieces inside the platen. When you've given the glue a chance to dry, you can reattach the top platen piece and then thread on the bottom platen piece using a utility knife blade and for safety one that you've covered up with a sharp edge with tape, tighten up the bottom platen piece until there's just enough clearance that the knife blade can move freely but without slipping the grooves between the top and bottom pieces. We take our lead screw and insert it in our bottle and tighten it down. Now we simply take our platen and spin it on from the bottom. Once we get close, we go a bit slower and transition to using the handle at the top of the jig to move the platen to the position on the inside of the bottle that we need. We then take our lock thread and spin it on till it's pushing against the platen and tighten it in place. Now, I'm sorry, I, when I was filming this, I actually forgot to put on the, uh, the lock nut, but as I showed you earlier, how it slides on, that's what you want to do. Now we're ready to cut, but for safety's sake, please don't use a regular utility knife blade for this purpose. Without practice, it's fairly easy for the knife to slip out of the groove and for you to unintentionally drag the blade into some part of your body and trust the voice of experience, and that is going to hurt. What you want to use are these curved utility knife blades. They're often called roofing blades or linoleum blades, and while not eliminating the risk of cuts, they are certainly a lot safer to work with. In fact, this application, they're actually easier to cut with, as once you've inserted the blade in the bottle, you just push down until the curved back of the blade is resting in the groove, and as you rotate the bottle or turn the knife, you maintain a good cutting angle for the plastic. You can't go crazy with your cutting speed. First and foremost, you want to ensure that you're cutting accurately and that any pressure you're applying to the blade is not warping or pressing the platen out of position. But once you reach the start position of your cut, you're all done. You can use the jig handle to lower the platen until it's totally free of the bottle, spin the platen off the lead screw, remove the lead screw from the bottle, and you're done. You now have a nice clean square cut on your bottle so you can use it in your projects. Of course, you don't have to use the entire bottle. Perhaps you just want to use a few inches for enclosing something like a snow globe or a miniature terrarium. If that's the case, then simply keep the jig in place and from your first cut, use the handle to move the platen into place for your next cut. Tighten up the lock thread and cut yourself the cylinder height you want. Well, there you have it. Your own uh, 3D printed plastic soda bottle cutting jig that will amaze your friends, impress your colleagues, and uh, earn you valuable redemption points for the upcoming rapture. Check out the video description for the link to where you can download uh, the STL files you need for this project. And now this specific uh, project was assembled for a standard 2 liter uh, pop bottle, but if you're one of our patrons you can easily order up custom STL files for a jig that will work with the specific size of uh, bottle that you need to cut. So thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see all the neat projects uh, we have coming up, many of which will be using this very same jig, then make sure to keep in touch. And by now, we think you know what you need to do for that to happen. As, also, as always, we also invite you to join us at our website, printablescience.com, where all the science that fits. 
Blueprint。